In this video, I'm going to quickly share about clothing styles, shapes, and materials for men and women that are going to make your summer of concealed carry simple and what clothing choices might add specific challenges. First, let's talk about fabric. In recent years, I lived in some very different climates from the El Paso desert to coastal Georgia, and I learned a thing or two about what fabric conceals well and what fabric is most comfortable in the heat. And unfortunately, they're not always the same fabric. If you live in a more desert-like climate, then linen is your best friend when it comes to fabric selection. This is because linen is not only extremely breezy and airy, but it's also the most structured natural fiber. And because it has a structure of its own, it doesn't print as easily around your firearm. However, if you live in a very hot and humid climate, like coastal Georgia, for example, <laughs> linen is still nice, certainly better than a cotton material is for keeping cool, but there's really nothing quite like a thin dry fit material in that kind of humid climate. Unfortunately though, that also happens to be one of the worst materials for concealment purposes. There are some ways that you can get around this if you're absolutely married to this kind of dry fit material during the hot summer months, but they can come with some drawbacks. You can deep conceal, meaning carrying your gun entirely below your waistband. Learning how to do this well without below the belt printing and maintaining a reasonable draw speed is a skill in and of itself, but it can definitely come in handy when carrying in non-permissive environments or when wearing an athletic material shirt. When I say non-permissive, I don't mean illegal. I mean in places where printing would come with a higher likelihood of negative outcomes or just awkward conversations. You can also consider carrying in something like a fanny pack, but Keep in mind that this is considered off-body carry and requires a certain level of understanding in order to do it safely and responsibly. Off-body carry done well is often more challenging and cumbersome than carrying on your person. Additionally, you can always tweak your own concealed carry setup to see what kind of results you're able to achieve while carrying the same way you would normally. Keep in mind though that concealment compromises often show up when we start moving our bodies. I'd suggest setting up your phone and taking a video of yourself performing various movements to see how your concealment is looking in a variety of materials. Ultimately, we are probably going to wear what we already have in our closet. Getting great concealment comes largely from selecting a good carry system and understanding how to apply concealment principles to you and your gear. I'd say concealment is probably 80% concealment mechanics and 20% clothing selection and fit. Even with the most tent-like clothing, you can still make a gun print if it's in a poorly designed holster and it exceeds a certain percentage of your hip to hip distance. First, selecting clothing for concealed carry does not simply come down to the old adage that you ought to buy a size up from what you'd normally wear in order to conceal a gun. Sure, that solution may work for some people, but often they still struggle to achieve a high level of concealment. However, it's important to also have realistic concealment expectations. We can't just wear skin tight clothing and expect to make a gun disappear. The gun always has to kind of hide where the clothing drapes. If the clothing has no drape, then concealment becomes an exceptional challenge and nearly impossible. Instead of buying clothing that's too big for you, maybe consider getting a shirt in a more structured fabric like linen or picking it up in a pattern or with some form of gathering like a peplum top for us ladies or a striped button up for the guys. It just so happens that many of the current fashion trends or even classic fashion trends can also aid in concealment, like tucking in a shirt to create a slight blousing effect around the waist where the gun is or a slight half tuck for the ladies can achieve the same thing, which leads me into into the final topic, social camouflage or style. Social camouflage may look different depending on where you live. I grew up just outside of Portland, Oregon, where everyone basically dresses like they might just happen upon a hiking path at any given moment. Blending in via social camouflage in that type of environment could look like a full getup from the Prana clothing store, or it could look like a simple sundress or jeans and a t-shirt. Take a look at the world, the environment around you and observe what clothing styles might be considered social norms and what might stick out like a sore thumb. It's okay to stand out. We all like to be unique in our own way, but keep in mind that your concealment game should be on point with all of those eyes on you. Avoid dressing in clothing that communicates gun without having to see where you're actually concealing it. Wearing a shirt that says, not a pepper spray kind of girl tells certain people that there's probably a free gun somewhere on your person. And 
And same goes for the Glock Perfection t-shirts. Concealment goes beyond holster selection, concealment features, and clothing style. Summer homework. If you're concealing for the first time this summer or you just simply want to up the quality of your concealment, I would suggest following up with this summer carry homework. First, calculate your concealment percentage. You can do this by dividing your hip to hip measurement in inches into your gun height measurement. You can check out the how to measure portion of this video somewhere up here, I'll link it somewhere for more details if you need them. Guns larger than 40% of your hip to hip distance begin to present challenges with concealment. That's not to say that it will be impossible, but more so to just give you a point of reference for the level of difficulty you're dealing with based off of sheer size. Now that you have an idea for the difficulty level that you're working with, you can make concealment choices accordingly. Maybe your percentage was way up in the 60s. That's a pretty serious challenge, especially for the summertime. If it's in the budget, both monetarily and time-wise, it might be worth considering adding a more concealable size gun to your summer carry rotation. There is a reason that a lot of people have a winter carry gun and a summer carry gun, because the changing of seasons brings on different challenges that can be addressed in part by gun size and selection. Summertime can be an especially challenging time of year to be carrying and effectively concealing a gun. I hope that this video gave you the helpful tips that you were looking for in order to address your summer concealed carry needs. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.